Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Keymaker Enhanced Edition with me, Bring It Dawn. So this episode will be an entirely Kingdom Management episode. Um, and I did the math, we do have enough time to get all our stats to rank 10. If nothing, uh, nothing goes amiss. So who do I want to rank up next? Probably the Grand Diplomat. Magic is pretty low, actually. But yeah, let's focus on the ones that are higher and try to get them to, uh... Rank 10 first. Why does he have her? Both of them have a red thing. What's going on here? I'll deal with that in a second. Put him on the competition then. 10% chance to solve. Sure. Can't put him on that, so it'll just have to wait, I guess. Rank 9. So I don't know what those secret caches are. So we'll put her... Actually, hold on. Who can we rank up besides... We do the High Priest. So what it is, we'll put him on this. Does anybody want to talk to us? I don't think that they do. Cool. I can get behind that. See on. He's on a opportunity, so we'll cancel that and rank him up. Okay. Good, good, good. Yeah, I figured she's going to fail that. Okay. Stuff. Okay. High priest seeks advice. Combat priest, sure. And sure. Oh, we're troubled. Uh oh. Let's do that. A lot of hits to our economy. I don't know why it went down to Troubled, though. Our stats were still good. Oh, we have arrested some agitators from Tuvet, Tuvet or Tuve? Tuveti. I don't know. <laughs> they claim themselves harbingers of atheism and doubt the high status and authority of the gods, whose servants cause only pain and suffering. We should do as Tuvet's neighbors have done and drive these agitators away, while still preventing bloodshed. Tell me about this Tuvet. It's a bad place. Wars between rival priests tore Tuvet apart. The fighting almost destroyed the country. Neighbors annexed half the territory. The people were starving, and the priests and the king didn't care at all. So General Vorin gathered all the gathered the people's full support, overthrew the king, and seized power. Vorin put an end to the war, restored order, and recovered the kingdom's lands. Eowyn had proved that he seized the priests' treasures to feed the people. It was the priests who led the people to starvation, but Vorin isn't the sort of man you would freely give power to. He expelled all the priests from Tuvet. Dissenters were dragged behind horses through the streets and stoned to death. He also turned the temples into refuges. Refuges? Refugees? 
The refuges, that's right. A combination of schools, hospitals, and offices. I thought he was trying to say into like refugees' quarters, but no, that's right. I'm stuck on that. I can't, I can't move past it. Alright. Born instituted uh, strict order and fully subdued Tuvet. Its people sing praises to him every morning, as if he were a god, for saving them from religion and laziness. Everything is closely watched. Indeed, Vorn himself announced that the country was full of spies. This is how he compels obedience. Like most crimes, speaking out against the general was punished by death at the hands of his knights. They are warriors, judges, and executioners, all at the same time. The worst sin in Tuvet is believing in anyone or anything other than Vorn. The general has declared Vorn all gods. He combined the ways of Razmirin and Rahadum, the famous country in Gar Garund which denies all the gods. Take my word for it. Tuvet would never flourish without the patronage of a mighty god. On the contrary, the country is now isolated, and it has no allies. Yeah, declare the teachings prohibited, and drive them to the border. Sure. Uh, make sure that they are entirely driven from your lands. This one divine. Rank up the Magister. I can do another feast for the afflicted. That'd be fantastic if I could. The chief is dead, long live the chief. That. Don Victus, I've just spoken to, with a Kelid shaman, who came in voluntarily and surrendered himself to the guards. He and his brethren have fled their tribes. They know that they will never win, and that you're the best chief as he puts it. Now they wish to serve you, and are even willing to share their knowledge with us. But I don't think we should take them up on their offer. It's not that their word can't be trusted, but our security is more valuable than the assistance they could offer. Plus, the people are scared to death of them. They can summon ferocious beasts, and not long ago, they were doing terrible things in the service of our enemy. I believe it would be best to simply command them to leave and never return. Lose Divine and Arcane. Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, I won't be their new chief. The shamans have 10 days to leave my realm. Wonderful Don Victus. I'll tell them as much. Scroll of Stormbolts. Okay, plus one arcane. Spell resistance discovery. Groundbreak research is in the sea. Provides spell resistance of 16 to the king and his companions while fighting in claimed regions. Ooh. Okay, let's go ahead and put her on that then. Sounds like fun. Then we'll rank up the warden here. Or the treasurer. To make sure I have nothing else I need to be working on while while we do this. Ooh, some divine. Plus three divine. Treasure wants to talk. Law of the Pike. So, well, maybe. Yeah, we'll throw her on this. Cause I can't. her effectiveness anymore. Just gonna get that to a hundred. All right, treasure wants to talk. Strength about to follow you as a treasurer. Work on yourself. As long as the warden is available, we can level him up next. Your Highness, I've come to express my boundless respect. I had no idea I would be part of something this grand. 
You're able to build a prosperous and wealthy state, where there was once just a broken, cursed, and godforsaken backwoods. You managed to reform a hostile country government, once full of corruption and bribery. The efforts have brought in too much money. It's strange. I never expected to say these words. Anyway, you must decide, decide where to invest it. I suggest you invite an experienced weather mage from Absalom to drive droughts and floods away from our fields. Another option is to send our talented youth abroad for study. Or for that matter, we could open a couple of trade offices in neighboring countries and use them as cover for our agents. I think I want to... Well, increase my arcane isn't a bad idea. Yeah, let's do, um... Let's do the arcane. Very well. It's wise to protect your fields from an early autumn or a torrid summer. When I was a baron, I also tended... I also tended first to my subjects' bellies. Because arcane and divine are two that I think we're lacking it. Well, sorry. Arcane, arcane, espionage, and divine. Actually, divine might be okay. Yeah. Espionage is a little behind. As is arcane. I think I need to build more buildings. Uh, we'll look into that in a second. Ooh, espionage went up. Alright, two people that want to talk. Um, is there a faster way? I forgot if there's a faster way to look at my towns. Is it a town or is it a city? It's a town. I don't think I need to build anything else there, though. Let's, um... Trigar is a village. Why, nothing's built in Trolls Bay? What? Yeah, there is. Uh, let's look for stuff that has espionage associated with it. We'll start at the bottom. So, watchtower, which we already have one of. Stop it. Get me out of there. I guess espionage or arcane. We already have a. So mansion would be nice to have. Arcane plus four. Hey Akba, what you doing, buddy? Put that right next to the mansion. <laughs> okay. Let's go talk to everybody. See, the capital's in danger, your highness. A night patrol on the outskirts caught a Kelid barbarian trying to poison a well. He was fatally wounded during the arrest. Before he breathed his last, he threatened that their shamans were going to poison all our food and water, and even the air we breathe. We don't know what shamans he spoke of, or when they might strike. We don't even know if we can trust the words of the dying barbarian. We're in a rough spot, but I brought a couple of allies who could help. Kesta nods in the direction of his companions. The big one is Roham Orend, just, just, Justiciar of Abadar, the captain of the Golden Shields. She guarantees that if her people go on patrol with our guards, they'll pounce on the troublemakers as soon as they enter the city. And, ahem, uh -huh, that's Wigmold's Smegly Dudden. 
It says to install a magical surveillance and prevention system that will allow us to locate and neutralize those barbarians before they can even get close to the city walls. Let's hear what Wigmold has to say about his magical surveillance system. The Age of Gnome bow bows long and deep, and the many bracelets on his wrist chime softly. The expensive cloth and elegant cut of his robe would be the envy of any metropolitan dandy, though few would dare to leave the house draped in such bold colors. Wigmold Smegly Dudden, the finest magical surveillance system specialist from Druma to Brevoy, at your service. What exactly is it that you do? My expertise, or enterprise, offers a full range of services and security assurance. Jeez. If you install one of my magical surveillance complexes, you will always know who enters or leaves the contractually determined zone of control, as well as when they enter and leave, and even for a price. Why? In Jeruma, my systems were in high demand from both law enforcement, who needed to keep the town hall and prison under constant surveillance, and countless private clients. I've experienced working with banks, jewelry stores, art galleries. How does your surveillance system work? Your Highness's interest flatters me, but I'm afraid that would be ruining myself if I were to surrender the details. It's a trade secret, you see. I can only say that, it's my, that it is my own design, which has allowed me to radically increase the zone of control compared to my competitors' products. While many of the usual charms can, be, can capably detect a breach and send out the alarm within one or two buildings, my system is capable of covering several districts, and the whole city if necessary. Uh, tell me about the lands you, that you hail from. Your Highness wishes to learn of Druma? The gnome smirks. It is the land most striking, for its people worship not the gods, but trade in prosperity. Nearly all the people of Druma follow the prophecies of Calistrade, a philosophy that preaches severe abstinence and professes that the acquisition of wealth is the purpose of life. They respect law and order, but never choose sides in the universal battle between good and evil. They follow a strict diet and refuse themselves basic comforts, even though they could afford to drown themselves in luxuries. They maintain ritual purity, only draping themselves in white colors and wearing elbow-length gloves to avoid any physical contact with infidels. It is considered a virtue to never give to charity, and those who acquire wealth despite their superior's efforts are rewarded. So why did you leave Druma? Life in Druma is most remarkable, but it go grows dull and it grows dull quite quickly. The constant struggle for power and gold is wor wearisome. I felt a lack of spontaneity, of unpredictability, of strong feelings and grand gestures. In other words, all those things that are so abundant in your lands. For a second, the gnome loses himself as he gazes dreamily into the distance. Alright, I wish to speak with Rohan, the leader of the Justiciars. The woman before you holds herself erect, and there is confidence in her stance. Her polished armor shines even dimly in the lit throne room. Greetings, your highness. I, re I represent the Golden Shield, the Society of Abadar's Faithful, which offers law enforcement services to anyone that may require them. Tell me about your society. We are more, we are more than mere mercenaries. We are a brotherhood of warriors devoted to upholding the law and fighting the ruinous powers of chaos. Each of us has sworn a solemn oath to follow the ideals of Abadar and stay true to the best interests of society. These are more than words. By the powers that are bestowed upon me by our divine benefactor, they have become a sacred pact guided by the higher spheres. Should one of us breach his, his contractual obligations to an employer or commit any deed that breaks the law, in letter or in spirit, then the heavens themselves will smite him down. He will be cursed, and all the members of this, his society will, will immediately sense it, wherever they may be, whatever they may be doing. Our oath demands that we track down the former comrade and bring him to justice. And how did you become a Justiciar of Abadar? I grew up in Molthun. My town entered a contract with the local temple of Abadar. The taxes on the priest's extensive property were waived, and in exchange they raised the city's orphans. I happened to be one such child. My advisor referred to you as the Golden Shields, yet you say Golden Shield. Which one is it? The captain smiles at you. It is Shield. But it's a mistake so common that we have long stopped correcting anyone. We even had to purchase the Golden Shields which supposedly gave us our name. Without them, some of our clients refused to believe that we were who we claimed to be. In truth, our name was chosen for a different reason. Gold is the color of our patron Abadar, the god of laws, cities, and prosperity. And the shield symbolizes our purpose to protect civilization and order from chaos and anarchy. Well, that would be all. Thank you, Roham. And what's your advice? The strength of our guard does not lie in its ability to track down potential criminals and catch them ahead of time. But our guard can capably cast a net over the whole city and maintain constant control over multiple remote locations. 
And if the Golden Shields can help us make the net even stronger, and guard all entrances and exits from the city even more thoroughly. Yeah, the Barbarians are coming for us anyway, so let our guard benefit from the extra numbers. Let the Golden Shields take up their duties immediately. As you wish, Your Highness. I'll make sure Roham and her team are briefed. The captain's face lights up with a barely visible smile. Thank you, Your Highness. We will justify your trust in us. Wegmont lowers his heavy gaze in a farewell bow. Even his bracelets seem to clink more sadly. I, I don't see why I couldn't hire both of them. Wasn't I just told I was making too much money? <sighs> Whatever. Your Highness, I received several letters today, welcoming diplomatic notes and offers of friendship. We've had many similar letters before, but these are addressed from Garund. Governors on the other edge of the world have taken an interest in our friendship. They've heard much about us, and we have their respect. This is a great success, Your Highness. Just as it's always been, people see everything beyond the stinking swamp next door as a bizarre and frightening world that's best avoided. But you somehow managed to elevate your subjects, and they've finally begun to travel abroad. And as for our foreign guests, well, at least they no longer mumble curses under their breath as soon as they step out of their wagons. We have a few options for maintaining this growth. Firstly, it would be nice to stay in touch with those who are traveling abroad. One could compare it to a sort of leash, you know? That is to say, we could publish a newspaper for our kingdom's expatriates. Expatriates? And if things aren't going so smoothly here at home, our reputation abroad will be protected. Apart from that, there are many citizenship applicants. Rumor has it that you plan on turning your kingdom into a refuge for the poor, ugly, and sick. But, you, but what use could we possibly have for a crowd of invalids? It would be better to promise citizenship only to the strong and brave, those prepared to spill their blood in military service or uh, to prove their loyalty. Yeah, let's do this one. Excellent, your sub- or excellent. Your subjects will be grateful if you make those common strays. I mean, zealous citizen citizenship applicants spill their blood for them. I mean, that's how Romans took care of it. So why not? Sounds good to me. If you want citizenship, you gotta earn it. I mean, I'll welcome, uh... Who needs to rank up? Um, I'll hide the Grand Diplomat because he's about to be ranked 10. So we'll put him on this. Who's gonna rank up next? The minister, so I can't put him on anything. Magister. All right, Magister wants to talk. The art of persuasion. Talk to the Magister, and then we'll deal with whatever comes next. This trouble, Don Victus. A powerful magical anomaly has afflicted one of our regions. 
According to the local mages, spells sim either simply don't work or lead to completely unexpected results. While trying to repair his carriage, an experienced mage unwittingly levitated, by, levitated a bystander. Elsewhere, a famous illusionist was setting off fireworks, but instead turned the ground under his audience's, his audience's feet into deep and slippery mud. New reports pour in by the day. Magical fires sweep the settlements, storms of acid form from nothing, furniture comes to life and attacks its owners. The worst part is that we have no clue as to the nature or cause of this. There are simply no scholars with sufficient knowledge remaining in the kingdom. We put too many restrictions on the inhabitants of the mage's quarter. All that remains is to deal with the consequences. The treasurer could simply send some money to the poor souls and hope they can deal with their problems themselves. However, the more reliable course would be to enlist the aid of the high priest. Divine magic is powerful, and unlike arcane magic, it remains untouched by the anomaly. It still works as it's supposed to. So I think that's where the curator would be a better magister than her, uh, because he has a more hands-off approach as we saw with the uh, that one guy's play. So this is the second time she's shown up, but no one else is... Uh... Oh, another uh, scroll of storm bolts. Thanks. None of my other artisans have shown up in like a month. Oh, here they come. Okay. Potion of bark skin? Well, thanks, man. I'm glad that's not something I could buy at the beginning of the game. Fortunate fencer. Integrity. Vest of mirrors, I think we've seen that before. I think somebody actually has it equipped. Alright, this ring grants us where a plus two bonus to attack rolls with melee weapons. Okay. Does anybody need that? Oh yeah, I never activated his stuff. Yeah, okay, that's the bardic thing. Integrity. This rape grants us where a plus three resistance bonus on will, fortitude, and reflex saving throws, and the ability to cast blindness spell once per day as a fifth level wizard. Okay. Crap, I just put him on that. Let's actually take him off of that then. For the first. Okay, yeah, we got time. Let's rank up the treasurer. Okay, um, High Priest, Warden, or Minister, and they're all still busy. No, the Warden's not. I will right, we'll start with the uh, Magical Anomaly, put him on this. Twenty-five percent chance. Yeah, let's go ahead and put her on that. Is she it? Yeah. Huh, that sucks. Man's best friend. Down to this, all in this together. A strange theory spreading. Oh, yeah, that I'm a lycanthrope. Let's uh, take, let's quell that real quick. Well, I need to rank up the Warden, so I can't put him on one of these yet. But we have time. So before I call it an episode, I do want to get everybody up to rank 10. 
So it might be a little longer than the norm. I think we'll benefit from it. The high priest and the minister are both still, uh... Okay. They're still busy for a while, but we can do one of the Kingdom Region projects. Uh, Your Highness, as soon as the Golden Shield stepped onto the streets, Domain become, became even more safe. Truth be told, I've come to think that I underestimated them. They already had much respect for their experience and skills from the outset. The shamans who threatened to poison food and water in the capital were caught one by one. None of them came with an arrow's flight of a well or a granary. I also wanted to take this opportunity to congratulate you, Your Highness. I've served many rulers, and none was able to achieve such order in this domain, especially under such harsh conditions. I shall remember with pride my service to you in these trying times. I'll carry these memories fondly to my grave. I like Kesson. He's kind of a, a goof, but he, he means well. Alright, then what we can do is a region upgrade since uh, the... Oh wait, no. He's still available to level up again. So I uh, get him off of this then. Come here. Alright, now it'll be rank 10. Huzzah! Yeah, whatever. I don't care about relations. That's not important. Okay. We'll put him on that to help increase our espionage. And then I'm going to focus on ranking up the high priest. Nope. He's rank 9. He's taken care of. He's taken care of. Alright. High Priest wants to talk. That's fine. We're almost done. I have to keep stopping to talk to these people. We'd, been, we'd be done in no time. I'd like to congratulate you, Your Highness. These lands were once a gloomy, godforsaken place. Its people were shackled by ignorance. But now the sky shines to the light of the gods. Now the temples are full of followers, and godly blessings protect the kingdom against calamity. You relentlessly pursue the small cults of dark and vile gods, and clear the lands of blight and abomination. The priests appreciate your effort. A sacred guard gathers, priests of the gods we honor here to protect law and order in these lands. Abadar and his followers have brought law and order to your kingdom. Little by little, the stone lands are shifting away from the dark times of the past. Thank the gods. Your subjects appreciate this newfound peace and order. Trade flourishes, lining the people's pockets with gold. Your choice of patron for the kingdom was very wise indeed. I forgot I picked a, a deity. A national deity. That goes directly against the establishment clause. Okay, high priest rank 10. Let's do it. Black Ravine is back. Fun. Gonna put you on this, buddy. He's rank 10, so I don't need him anymore out and about. Alright, let's rank up the minister. I think it's just him and the uh, magister left to upgrade, right? Yep.
We interrogated the traitors we discovered in our ranks. They were hired by someone in D Daggermark. The enemy is dangerous and covers his tracks well, but I'll find him. We don't know which of the Daggermark elders is our enemy, but they do, and they will willingly betray their own if they can profit in doing so. Daggermark's influence stretches far and wide, and its representatives can be found across the kingdom. We can strike them at any time. If we apply enough pressure, the elders of Daggermark will be forced to reveal our enemy's name, if only to stem the loss of blood. Though in truth, it is not blood but gold that flows in their veins. Ripping open their purses would be even more effective than ripping open their bellies. They're going to hit them right in their fat purses. Echo nods happily. There is no honor among such, no honor among such as these. We take away their meat, and they'll turn on each other like jackals. Wait, what? You finally found your true calling. Tell me now. Why did you tell me all of these all of those stories? Shania sighs heavily, almost defeated, and suddenly starts to speak in plain and clear words. A good story is like an island. You sail to it in your boat, get off on the shore and start walking, north or south, into the mountains or along the shore. Or perhaps you start digging a hole, wishing to know what lies underneath. Depending on what side of the story you choose to look into, you always find something different. Good friends are vicious monsters, great treasures are pesky mosquitoes. Do you see? The same story may become the story of a villain or a hero. It all depends on how you tell it. It may become a comedy or a tragedy, and you can make of it what you wish. You may arrive at any conclusion you desire. So ultimately, does it really matter what happened? Does it matter whether or not it actually did? Or perhaps the only thing that matters is the story itself, and you, the listener, deciding on your own what to make of it. Yeah, begin making your great weapon. Okay, scouting Glenavon, not really worried about that right now, but we'll go ahead and put him on that. He hasn't had anything to do in a while. Oh, what is that? Cool, espionage went up, that's important. Blessing of Abadar, plus two... Bonus assault, resolving any opportunity with a regent or treasurer. Increase the community by one for each success, and the regent or treasurer receive 2 BP per week for every 20 points of community above 200, up to 20 BP per week. Cool. Okay. Fox hunt. Let's do, um, can't do that. Okay, yeah, let's do this. All events that can be resolved by minister in the entire kingdom roll two checks for resolution to pick the best result. In addition, all of the minister's opportunities have a plus five check bonus. Wait, the same. Oh, he must not have a high enough level. Okay, let's um, shoot. Spirit loyalty, culture and economy, arcane, divine. The Grim Prophetess, we'll put him on that. Testimony of Loyalty, put her on that. Let's talk to the Minister. Or is it the Magister? Minister, good. Don Victus, we have a report from Daggermark. The enemy we seek is the leader of one of the two guilds that rules the city. It's Janice Smilos, the head of the Assassin's Guild. Bold and dangerous. She recognizes an enemy when she sees one. She saw us as a threat and decided to strike first. And now we have her all but cornered. It's time we strike back. It is for you to decide how we should proceed. Deception? Slander? A bomb that turns the whole guild to ash? We can send a false letter to Livondar, the Lord of Daggermark. We will, we will lead him to believe that the guild was conspiring against him. Finally, we could turn our enemy into our friend by striking the other guild. 
the blood would forge a new alliance. Yeah, offer her to make peace, join forces, and attack the other guild. It's a crafty move. I'll take care of it. The obliteration, is that... Is that his, um, masterpiece? And is Perfection her masterpiece? I think I'm getting masterpieces now. Hold on. So, I don't know if I explained it earlier in the Let's Play or not. Uh, masterpieces are based on your ranks and your, uh... It is. This is his master... This is masterwork. Masterpiece. It's a plus five vicious. An utterance is written on this weapon's handle in the infernal language. Let the powerful gain more power. Let the weak grow weaker. Whenever this plus five vicious earthbreaker lands a hit on an enemy, it applies a stacking minus two AC penalty to the target. This penalty is severe once battle ends, but it keeps stacking. And I think perfection is uh, Nazriel's masterpiece. Your reflection of this longsword's polished blade possesses a godlike beauty and wears a golden laurel wreath. This plus five longsword grants its wielder a plus two inherent bonus to armor class and all saving throws, attack rolls, and skill checks. Neat. What was this? These gloves grant they wear a plus six enhancement bonus to charisma and the ability to cast greater heroism three times per day as a level 12 wizard. Yeah, those are her, their uh, masterpieces. This episode is going to go over quite a bit longer, but that's fine because everyone will be ranked 10 by the end. Toxic and spies. All situations can be resolved by the minister. Roll two checks to pick. Oh, never mind. I've already seen that. Okay. Noble in trouble. Put him on that. Relations and loyalty, divine plus three, loyalty and culture. Magister wants to talk. Ransom, okay, put her on that. Visitors from another world, we'll put him on this. I may as well do 100%. We'll talk to the Magister. Things are going well. I do not envy you, Don Victus. It's a tough decision. We're at an impasse. The civil folk can no longer suffer the threats of our mages and sorcerers. A wave of protest has rolled across the capital and the surrounding regions. I've just spoken to a delegation that represents the people. Their demands are quite, their demands are quite clear. They want us to restrict the use of magic in places where people live. This will mean that casting spells and brewing potions will require a permit. Even then, it would only be allowed on the outskirts of settlements and during the day. Can you imagine the outrage that... Such measures would spark in every member of the magic community? And is a false feeling of safety worth limiting people's freedoms? I don't think so. Yet we cannot allow baseless fears to dictate our actions. We shall set, we shall set not needless limits on the freedoms of spellcasters. Well said. So be it. Military stability. The shipwreck.
My Magister wants to talk. Perfect. It's been a while since I came to you like this, Don Victus. You must be wondering if I'm here to talk about troubles again, huh? Well, believe it or not, this time I just wanted to tell you about all the successes we've been enjoying recently. We refused to place new restrictions on the use of magic, and as expected, the people made peace with the decision. Recently, our mages have even started enjoying a bit of a bit more understanding and tolerance. We've come a long way over the years. Our kingdom now employs magic of the highest order and does so confidently and responsibly. Unlike many other states, we've done everything in our power to constantly maintain control over the situation and ensure that the development of magic serves the people and not the other way around. The time has now come to enjoy the fruits of our labor. There are three projects I can suggest. First off, my personal favorite, we could exchange our arcane knowledge with our neighbors. Second, we could use the experience and know-how of our magic schools to help educate our priests more quickly and thoroughly. Lastly, we could start producing magical weapons and armor for our army. So what do you think we should focus on? In diplomacy above all, we should exchange our arcane knowledge with, our, with other states. Wonderful. I can't wait to see what we gain in return. Dargan, you bring in your masterpiece as well? Is Onslaught his masterpiece? No. Is it? Well, it depends on if it's armor or not. Mirabeau. I think that's his masterpiece. Or masterwork. I don't remember if it's called masterpiece or work. Yep, here it is. That's his masterpiece. This plus 5 mithril full plate grants its wearer plus 8 enhancement bonus to strength and increases their movement speed by 20. And then Mirabeau is his. Here are the words written in this bow. Wab, seat, no, nifter, drow. Oh, here are the words written on this bow. <laughs> Whenever the wielder of this plus 5 composite longbow uses it to attack an enemy. The mirror bow also shoots a reflection arrow at the same target. Reflection arrow is a ranged attack that deals 1 to 4 plus half the wielder's strength bonus piercing damage. So he'll be equipping this. Just going to get rid of that as well. And then the armor I'm going to give to him. So yeah, we're just collecting masterpieces left and right. This is exciting. This will make her rank 10. Then all I need left, then all I have left is the minister. Espionage plus three, maybe he'll want to talk now. Or not. He needs one more level. I need to gain like 12 more espionage. Let's build some stuff real quick. Um. See, I know the watchtower gives me espionage. Well, there's nowhere for me to build it here. I need to find towns. We're so close, I just need to find one more. Watchtower? Probably not. Well, I tore it down the windmill for no reason, but it's fine. Uh, let's see. It's trade guard. Oh, 
Oh, it's only a village. Gosh darn it. Alright, so I already got the Goblin and Kobold quarters, which is what I need to build, because they give us the most espionage in a mansion. I mean, that's only a village as well. Shoot. Artisan's Rest? It's one of these darn things. Yeah, alright, this is a town. Goblin Quarters and Kobold Quarters. Then we'll step out, we'll do a uh, region upgrade. This one's actually really important earlier on. The upgrade I just did, because it gives you 20% movement speed in the kingdom. Why is my espionage not going up? How long does it take to build that stuff? I'm t I need my espionage to go up 12 more points. Alright, actually this will work if he can do this. Ignore that for right now, let's put him on this. Last Wall's Cavalry. So, so why is my espionage? It went up a little bit. Sorry, my stomach's growling. I'm very hungry. Just trying to get my espionage. Alright, there we go. Now I can talk to the minister. Perfect. I know it's a long episode, but it's worth it. Because we're finally going to have everything at rank 10. We've done well. We have loyal eyes and ears everywhere. We need not fear spies or conspiracies. Your domain is well protected against all manner of quiet threats. I regard our best people to the capital. They're crafty and sly, slippery as eels. And they've learned much from their dealings with our enemies. Make them your ambassadors now. A good spy makes a good politician. Speaking of enemies, our strike hit its target. The Poisoner's Guild has gotten underground, leaving us to seize their riches. The Attack Guild had spies in every corner. They need a new master. We have the chance to become that master, but where do we want our spies? Yeah, spies and embassies and consulates bring in the most valuable information. Alright, we'll learn what is being discussed in our neighbor's palaces. And that should do it. I think we're done. And we got a whole bunch of masterpieces. Oh, I want his masterpiece really bad. No, I didn't get it. His uh, his village is only a village. It's not a town or anything. I think divine intervention is the scimitar she crafts. I think it's like a plus four holy fire. I haven't seen it in a while, so I don't remember. Get to work on this special gift of yours. Okay. Alright, so what was Frost Touch? That's a great axe. Feybane plus three. 
And yeah, divine intervention is the uh, the holy flaming scimitar. All right, let's just double check, make sure our all, uh, all of our stats are at ten. Espionage isn't. Oh, that's right. He needs to rank up one more time. Well, here we go. Finally, all right. All stats are at rank 10. And we have 45 days until the... Uh... Next thing. All right, next episode we'll do some region upgrades up until uh, the next Bald Hilltop attack. I know this episode is like an hour long. Oh, we still have more stuff. Oh my gosh, my stomach is, is a rumbling. Hour long episode though, but we accomplished a lot in the grand scheme of things. But I'm going to call it here. Uh, next episode, like I said, we'll upgrade the regions a little more and prepare for the end. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode.